Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, the premier source for all things North America, construction framing, softwood lumber, and panel prices, and market commentary, coming to you from Vancouver, BC in Canada, every Friday since 1952. I have some sweet, sweet data updates for you right now. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover rail car loadings and softwood lumber production sawmill capacity utilization rates, which I do every month. And right away after, I'm going to do another video, U.S. Housing Starts, that just came out this week, using my lumber prices to give a good assessment of what is happening with the real estate market based on the forest industry, timber harvesting, lumber manufacturing, and all of that, which I do also every month. So I'm going to be comparing the rail car loadings and the softwood lumber production compared to one year ago. Some people have been commenting on some of my videos, why don't you compare to the previous month? Well, first of all, that's very easy to get. It's uh, all out there if anyone wants to see. And also, really, there's volatility that happens. The seasonality, there's different circumstances, perhaps like with fires or different situations causing issues with the supply chain, which might not be as much of a good overview of the situation now. I mean, we all sort of remember what happened last year, right? This, the uh, shutdowns and the slowdown of um, manufacturing and definitely issues on the supply chain in terms of people receiving their goods uh, is all well known now what was happening last year. Of course, this year is also unprecedented and, and not usual compared to, you know, decades, but in a different way than last year. So comparing the time now to the same week uh, one year ago, people can sort of get an idea of what is the situation right now and make their own sort of assessment of what's going to happen in the coming weeks for this summer and maybe in the next few months for the rest of this year. So the volume of materials moving on the railways across the United States has improved compared to last year, but last year was really down compared to the year before, okay? So that sort of gives you an idea of what you can expect in the coming weeks and in the coming months. So let's have a look at the graphs for the rail car loadings right now, and then I'll come back and show you um, the softwood lumber production and sawmill capacity. So U.S. total rail traffic, that's containers and intermodal combined, for the week ending July 17, 2021, compared to the same week last year, is up 6.6%. And again, combined year to date, so for the first 28 weeks of 2021, it's up 13% compared to the first 28 weeks of 2020. That's a really nice recovery and just goes to show how much of a struggle it was last year to get the goods out to the customers and why supply was so constrained. And so for Canada as well, combined uh, container and intermodal for the first 28 weeks of this year is up 7.6% compared to the same time last year. Uh, you can see a big dip there uh, on the red line at the beginning of July, and that explains a lot of the supply constraint and the reasons why prices might seem puzzling to people who are just looking at things from the outside. Okay, so those two graphs are noted as forced products, which includes, you know, pulp and paper and potentially logs. This is uh, Yardeni. Uh, provides the actual lumber and wood materials moving on the railway. This is a really good graph because it shows you in uh, correlation to housing starts. You'll remember my graphs that I make of my lumber prices and housing starts. So you can see there's an uptick there just at the end of May uh, on the red line for the uh, wood materials. And of course the blue line with the housing starts going up and down. So much of an improvement over those lows um, of last year, but really still not going smoothly the way the forest industry would like to get the manufactured wood products out to market. Okay, great. And so now in the same way, I'm going to show you uh, Canada and U.S. 
softwood lumber production and sawmill capacity utilization rates, once again comparing to the previous year so that you can just get an idea of where we're at compared to where we were and you know maybe kind of try to figure out where we're going. Okay, so this awesome data comes out of the Western Wood Products Association based in Portland, Oregon. They do a publication called Lumber Track once a month. Uh, and we have U.S. total softwood lumber production for January to April 2021 up 4.5% compared to 2020. Uh, so there's improvement um, and it actually looks getting closer to what we would consider normal back in previous years. For Canada, the total uh, for the first four months of this year is up 16%. And remember how I told you before that British Columbia is responsible for 50% of all Canadian lumber production? BC is up 25% compared to the first four months of last year. So improvement, not as much as we would like to see, but better than it was in the last uh, 12 months. This is an excellent graph which shows you that huge drop in sawmill capacity utilization rates in Canada, the red line, in uh, July and then again in December uh, of last year. Um, like I was saying in other videos, the um, large modernized sawmills, especially in BC, are optimized to run at like 90 or 95 percent. So those low numbers really take a lot of supply out of the market and we have for January to April of this year, U.S. sawmill capacity utilization rates improving to 88%, which is quite good for the U.S., from 83% one year ago. And in Canada, 84%, which is still somewhat low, but ever so much better than 72%, which it was for the first four months of last year, and really, again, took a huge amount of supply out of the marketplace. This data is for the first four months of this year. In March it was up, and in April it was up. So I'm saying when the June, July uh, data comes out, it's also going to be up. Okay, So the supply-demand balance is recovering from the absolute inequality that it was in last year and uh, in the early months of this year, but it's still not really at an equilibrium. So why do I say that? Why do I say it's not at an equilibrium? The blue line is this year. The price of lumber in on the week of July 17th matched exactly where it was one year ago, except this year it's moving down and last year it was moving up. So all of this information put together, what are the lumber prices, how much stock is moving through the supply chain, how much is being produced, which is going to be moving through the supply chain, except for that data as you know from a couple of months ago already now. This lumber price information tells you exactly this week what's happening this week. So a lot of the conversation that people were trying to make um, at the end of last year and the beginning of this year that this is price gouging and it's uh, collusion and the government should get involved and blah, blah, blah for the sawmills. Why was the price up so high? Because U.S. housing is nonstop. People are still remodeling, maybe a little bit less than they were, you know, in December, January, February, but up more than they were in previous years. And it took this long for the production volumes to improve. And they're still lower than they were the last good year. The last good year for U.S. home building was 2018. Okay, Maybe in the future I'll do an explanation of 2021 compared to 2018 as the year goes on and more data comes out. 